FDA approved the use of silicone implants last November, but how do they compare to saline breast implants? Also, what are the screening measures women with implants should undertake? Joining us for more insight is Dr. Marcel Daniels, an associate clinical professor at the University of California in Irvine. Dr. Daniels, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. In November, the FDA basically said that that uh, the silicone breast implants were safe enough to go back on the market, but they did have some caveats in terms of screening. Can you bring us up to speed on what that is? The current FDA recommendation on the implants is for silicone implants, a patient gets a screening MRI three years after surgery and then every two years thereafter. And is the idea that silicone ruptures less or more, there, more than saline is less uh, less safe than saline. How does it compare to saline? Well, the patency rate for a saline implant, uh, first thing you want to understand, all implants eventually leak. No implant lasts forever. Saline implants have a 10% leak rate by eight years after surgery and it gradually climbs after that. Uh, silicone gel implants at 10 years after surgery have a 92% patency rate or 8% uh, of them have failed. So they do hold up better than saline implants. The concern for the FDA is that if the implant has ruptured, does that free silicone gel in the body pose any problems? And so they're recommending these frequent screening MRIs to check for what we will call silent rupture, which would mean an asymptomatic rupture where the patient doesn't feel like they're having any problems. So is there any way that the doctor can tell without using an MRI if uh, if an implant has ruptured? Um, doctors can only detect ruptured implants about 30 percent of the time and even MRIs are not perfect. They have an 89 uh, percent accuracy rate in, de in determining if an implant has ruptured or not. Of course there's, this has been so controversial in terms of what the health problems are associated. There was a big study that came out from the Institute of Medicine that seemed to pretty much convince scientists at least that a woman's chance of getting overall sick from an implant were pretty rare, but there are still problems that can happen when saline escapes. Is that right? Well, for, with silicone gel, the current version of silicone gel is fairly cohesive. The gel is not as, as runny as previous generations of implants. So the tendency it for, is it for to, it to stay localized should the implant rupture. Um, I know for a fact that there are tens of thousands of women out there that had their implants in the 80s uh, and 70s that probably have ruptured implants that don't even know it because they're not manifesting any health problems at all. So that, that, that's one of the, the talking points is that is a ruptured implant necessarily a health emergency, a 911, a, a, a leaking poison time bomb? I, I don't think so. Well, certainly the FDA recently, when they said it was okay to put these back on the market, suggested that women get these MRIs every two years, I believe. Uh, but now I understand that there's a bit of a debate even among doctors about whether or not this is necessary. And in fact, just because the FDA says you should do this doesn't mean anybody has to do this, right? That would be correct. It's, a, it's an FDA recommendation. Uh, but it's not a, necessarily a mandate. Although the FDA, if the implant manufacturers cannot provide them with enough safety data over the next 10 years, we'll say, or even five years, they have the ability to pull the implants back off the market. So it's a bit of a, of a stick that they have to uh, hopefully ensure some degree of compliance. The, the problem here is if you look at the 10-year period following a surgery, with a 92% patency rate, 92% of women will have spent several thousand dollars out of their own pocket to have MRIs that they didn't need. So, because no, I don't think any third party payers are going to be covering these MRIs. This is going to come out of patients' pockets. That's, a, that's an important point because, in fact, the surgery for the most part women have to pay for, unless maybe it's done after, you know, breast reconstruction, after cancer, but for right. cosmetic reasons it's not. And then these women would have to pay out of pocket for the MRIs as well. That's absolutely correct. What about mammograms? Could they detect rupture? Now, screening mammograms are pretty ineffective for detecting rupture. MRI right now is the gold standard. And is there anything else maybe on the horizon that could be a better test than an MRI, which is expensive? Uh, no, I, you know, nothing that I know of. I've heard of it, of a, some kind of a tracking device or chip that they might put on implants that could detect leaking silicone. 
but then you'd have to do a study to know if the presence of that chip, that little piece of plastic, shortened the lifespan of the implant or had an adverse effect. So right now I don't think there's anything too promising on the horizon. Dr. Daniels, it's probably a good point to even remind us why uh, doctors and women prefer silicone over saline, which is really a saltwater solution, um, even though there are these added risks. Well, yeah, I mean, saline was pretty much forced on us, uh, we as plastic surgeons, by the moratorium that the FDA placed back in 1992. It's very stiff, it's not all that natural feeling, and certainly the limitations posed by salt water, rippling uh, becomes quite a problem, especially in thin-tissued patients. And if you think about it, the majority of women seeking breast augmentation don't have breast tissue themselves, and so you put an implant in there, and the bigger the implant, the more it's going to stretch their available tissue, and the more obvious it's going to be. Silicone, in my professional opinion, is the gold standard for the most natural look and feel. So what are doctors like you going to do in terms of these MRIs? Do you think most women, you'll be advising women to get them? Do you think women will be getting them? Will you be going back to the FDA to get them to change their recommendation? Well, I, for right now, I'll be telling the patients that the FDA is recommending they get these MRIs at three years after surgery and every two years thereafter. And then I'll also look the patient in the eye and say, understand that there's a 92% chance at 10 years that your implant will be intact. I have to leave it up to their judgment. Terrific. Well, it's very interesting. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniels. I'm sure this is something that we'll keep following.